kind of interesting over the weekend. I was talking to a gentleman who lives on the internet. And he had a lot of opinions about things, about how he was going to save the world and how he was going to do it and what he needed to do and how he needed to do it. And he had some kind of interesting idea of telling people what he needed from them in order for him to do it. And uh, <laughs> I kind of thought, well, so I made a comment and I said something about like, well, I think there's like a lot of other people that are kind of doing that too. You know, because he said, I need, you know, and every time I hear that word, I, I kind of gives me a red flag, you know, because I know when it comes to me, <laughs> if I use the word I, I kind of think of pride, you know, and I think of ego, and I think of, you know, doing my own thing, and how I can go my own way, and how I might be just, maybe, maybe just a little carried away, and it might not be God doing it, but me doing it. So, I was kind of, you know, reading some of his material, and he was pushing it, you know, and so he spammed it a few times, and I thought, Lord, <laughs> you know, I, I just got to say something, you know, God forbid that I should sin, but Lord, I got to say something. So I asked him, you know, I said, well, you know, don't you think that maybe the I is a little carried away, that maybe we are all working together in the ministry, and maybe we, you know, together, you know, share the good news of Jesus and you know, we all, you know, are one body and, you know, we love people and care about them. Kind of shared a little bit, you know. He came back at me, you know, <laughs> like most people will, you know. <laughs> Who made you judge? Who made you better than me? I wanted to say, like I normally want to say, and believe me, I can argue, you know, theologi theologically, you know, and debate, you know, logically, but... God never lets me. I wanted to say something back like, you know, well, <laughs> didn't know I was judging, but if you think so, okay. You know, but, no, the Lord just said, you know, I'll just talk to him. So I started sharing. And, you know, I said, well, I said, maybe, you know, it's not so much about me, you know, or you, but maybe it's just the I that kind of makes me think about flesh. Maybe it's like you and I, you know, when it should be, we are loving one another and caring and moving in that direction that the Lord wants us to work together, you know, cooperatively and sharing and, you know, whatever. So, of course, he came back with, you know, some scripture and I said, well, you know, maybe, maybe ask Jesus about it. You know, I said, ask him what he thinks. You know, I said, what I do whenever I'm in ministry is like, I ask the Lord, you know, what, what he wants done and then. I do what he tells me to do. And then, of course, that's offensive. So the conversation deteriorated. And he's mentioning things like, well, don't you think I know God? I know God. Haven't you read my profile? I am a Christian and I do this and I do that and I do this and I, I, I. I'm like, well, yeah, but what did Jesus say? You know, I said, Have you talked to Jesus lately? <laughs> Maybe that's a good place to start. If you go ahead and talk to Jesus today, maybe he'll lead you in his way, and it won't be me, my, and I, but his way, his will, and his accomplishments. And, you know, we shared, and he kept, he deleted me as a friend, and then sent me emails constantly about every, oh, I don't know, two or three minutes, throwing something, some new thing at me, and, I kept going back to, but don't you want to talk to God about it? Don't you care to find out what God may say to you about it? You know? She says, well, I hear from God. So well, well, good. Then ask him, you know. Then he read my profile and he says, well, who are you? You know, you, you really have an ego. You, you think you're somebody special. And I said, <laughs> really? <laughs> I said, and you read my profile? I said, that's interesting. And I said, the only thing I talk about, and it says in my profile, in case anybody's wondering on Facebook, I'm all about you discovering for yourself about Jesus, and then you and Jesus dealing with it. You know, it's like, 
hey, I don't know what God has in store for you. I only know that I'm going to put you in remembrance or cause you to remind you that God is real and that you can talk to him and he can talk to you. Otherwise, why is he God? I mean, frankly, it'd be kind of a lousy God if he couldn't talk, if he couldn't speak, if he couldn't somehow communicate to you, then it would be like just kind of a good idea, but so's philosophy. <laughs> I mean, go after philosophy if it works. I mean, come on. But since God is real and Jesus does speak to us, why not check in with the Son of God and talk to our Father in Heaven? And that's basically what's in my profile. And I thought, huh, shall I ask him a few more times about, why don't you just you know, talk to God about it. So he kept calling me names and saying things. And finally, I just said, well, I said, you know, everything that you keep accusing me of, it seems like after all these posts, if you read back my responses and you read back your statements, it seems to me that you're showing what you're telling me, I am, by what you're saying. And it seems to me that as I read it, I'm constantly telling you to share and care about Jesus, and you're telling me about all these other things. And I said, maybe I'm wrong, or maybe I'm right. But I said, I think you've made my case for me. You know? Because frankly, all you got to do is read it, because it's right there. And you know, he went ahead and, you know, kind of what I figured was deleted the emails, which I only responded to what he would send me and tried to share with him about, hey, you know, just talk to God about it. You know, if you got a problem, you know, with a person, why don't you pray for him? I mean, you know, <laughs> don't go and, you know, make it worse. You know, don't try to stir it up or, you know, aggravate it. Maybe you just need to pray about it. And then, you know, do what God says, because it's not just like throw out a prayer and leave it there, unless you just want to wait and see how God takes care of it. But sometimes about listening to what God says, you have to do. So, for me, you know, maybe I'm too simple, but point for point, it would be easy to go through a dissertation and to logically lay out a complete explanation of every topic, point of view, circumstance, idiom, and ramification of action and reaction that a person does. Because I was trained that way, you know, in my mind, is that logically I can extend outward what the person says and see, well, have you thought this through? You know, and I know the majority of people don't think through what they're saying. They just shoot it off from the hip and <laughs> usually <laughs> haven't thought that one through too well. And then they suddenly realize, oh, now that it's out there, how do I deal with it? Well, I usually can share with them even how to deal with that. Because that's kind of like what common sense and Proverbs is about and Psalms, you know, and kind of what God does with us. So when we deal with people, Sometimes it's not so much what they're saying as what God wants you to say because he's dealing with the heart. They may have, and this gentleman may have, they may have some bitterness inside or some things going on in life that are causing them to act a certain way that you don't know anything about. They may be dealing with some major health issue that you don't know and the only way they need the only way they know how to portray that or how to share that is by lashing out at people. Bah, 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 bah. You know, and once you get to know them a little better, they kind of, you know, you realize, oh, you're dying of cancer. Okay, well, I can understand why you'd be a little bitter or mad at God or something, or maybe into religion and not relationship. But dealing with people you can't change who you are in order to be what they need. You just have to be you. You know, you don't have to be a, a Rhodes Scholar or THD, you know, in theology in order to share Jesus. 
As a matter of fact, all you have to do is have a relationship with Jesus, and that's the simplest way to be. Because then you don't have to get into all these theological premises and arguments that really, when you listen to someone tell you about them, while it sounds good, while it makes sense and it maybe bolsters your faith in some way to realize that you can have an intelligent faith, you really can't argue anyone into the kingdom of God. You really can't argue anyone into being persuaded to your point of view. The only one that can do that is God. Because, you see, the heart, according to Proverbs, sits right here in God's hands. And he turns it any way he chooses. So, unless God turns the heart, the person you're talking to is never going to understand what you have to say. And they're probably never going to agree with you. But if you get God to turn their heart, you may find a friend where you once had an enemy. Build on solid foundations. No other foundation can anyone lay than that which is already laid, which is Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the Anointed One. We can know a lot of spiritual methods or formulas for getting things done, but many such methods simply have no power flowing through them. Powerless methods are like empty containers. They're useless. I had learned many spiritual methods and I was busy trying them until I realized that the methods don't work. <laughs> Methodology is good, but it's for Methodists. <laughs> it's a joke. Sorry, Methodists. It was like building on a cracked foundation. Nothing stood the test of time. If our foundations leak, we can get into trouble every time it storms. Build your life on who you are in Jesus. Take time to meditate or think about things and think them through. Think about the things you know about being with Jesus and who he is and who you are as a Christian. Build your life on the solid foundation that you are as a child of God, as an heir of God's grace as being given forgiveness and mercy in order to extend that to others. And if you do, then his favor, his protection, his guidance, his leading, his way of doing things in changing people's hearts towards you will be accomplished by him as you let him do what you cannot do. So just make sure that the focus stays the focus and the reason stays the reason. And you know what you're doing when you're sharing with people because people will, based upon where their hearts turn to, accept or reject and it has nothing to do with you. But it has everything to do with him.